Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And the latest movie in the Jurassic Park franchise, Jurassic World Dominion, is right around the corner, and you know what that means. It's time to review another Asylum Mockbuster, bringing us to Triassic World. This one came out in 2018, though, so it's more intended to ride the coattails of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Either way, it's not like the plot has all that much to do with either movie, outside of the use of dinosaurs as an excuse to have a similar enough name. Though generally when movies do this, the dinosaurs in question fall into the Cretaceous period anyway, not Jurassic, but yeah, that's hardly the biggest problem on display here. Triassic World is your classic asylum mockbuster. You can forget the whole world part right away. The movie takes place in one building, and not all that much of it. How oh, would you look at that? People have brought dinosaurs back from extinction, but use this as a means to start doing weird medical experiments. Before you know it, they break free of confinement and begin murdering people left and right. Will this experiment be salvaged? Will the dinosaurs be killed? Will anyone survive? And most importantly of all, who cares? Does it even matter? Let's take a look at Triassic World and find out. We open up to the body count rising. That was fast. We didn't even see what went wrong. Just, hey, dinosaurs are on the loose and it's up to this facility's rent cops to stop it. Slow down. Huh. Man took that surprisingly well. Jeez, it's like he doesn't even find the killer dinosaur on the loose, all that annoying. I've had more fearful, shocked, and terrified reactions to mosquitoes. But once he starts running, though, now he's scared, bolting down the hallway as fast as he can away from the dinosaur! He closes the door and suddenly regains his composure. Just relax. Good, good, relax. That's all right, you did enough damage today, okay? Yeah. Did I? I know how the quota calls for at least five times the body count. As such, she smashes through the doorway anyway. And we suddenly change focus to how things are looking outside this facility. It's just your average day of work for the guards. Smith, played by Thomas Stephen Varga, and Thomas, played by Joseph Michael Harris. Though most are taking the day off because of a certain VIP's arrival. Where's Hyde run off to? You gonna take a leak? Ah, oh, jeez, he can take a squirt on his own time after this muckety-muck arrives. The muckety-muck is here? What the muckety-fuck? Were they trying to come up with an insulting term for the man that was as inoffensive as possible? This would be the VIP's assistant, Bridget, played by Jennifer Levinson. As they are working with reduced staff today, Tommy gives the 10 cent tour to billionaire Stephen Hagen, played by Joel Birdie. Seems this facility is called Triassic and is run by none other than Dr. Marissa Martinelli, played by Haley J. Williams. Weirdly enough, this is one of the bigger names for an asylum production that actually does get a lot of screen time. She takes over the tour from here, as Mr. Hagen is a potential investor in their research, so she wants to make sure he gets the best impression he can. If I'm going to invest in something, I want to see what I'm working with. Very well. I'm not nice to cut to the chase. I like that. Cut down the extra sets. Fuck spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for a pretty incubation room will be in all of once. So they go straight to the holding room, housing two doctors. Charles Ovidio, played by Greg Furman, and Eva Neves, played by Paulina Inguin. This was all I ever wanted when I was like nine years old, and now, here you are. I don't know, man, I feel the same way about virtual reality. The 90s made that seem a lot closer than it actually was. Screw the tests and medical applications of this, no. Their investors just geeking out over the fact that they've grown frickin' dinosaurs in this place. The doctors mull over the fact that it's guys like Steve there that they have to rely on for funding and who inevitably get the glory in the end. Eva tells Charles not to worry so much about it. You will be remembered as the man who saved humanity. <laughs> That's enough out of you two. We're going to be avoiding the yellow dollar signs in this review, thank you very much. Marissa then brags about all their fail-safes that ensure that nothing could possibly go wrong whatsoever. They've got tracking chip implants, just in case. They move out of range of their enclosure, boom, entire facility is locked down. What about the people inside? They're trapped inside with vicious man-made monsters that pick them off one by one. Haven't you watched one of these movies before? But Marissa's like, that's what safe rooms are for. More importantly though, how is all of this possible? Who is the Mr. DNA in all of this? Well, that would be Diana over here, played by Shel Sterling. She's not a fan of the rich guy though. I'm just here to observe and ask dumb questions. The dinosaurs, they don't share any of our DNA. Well, he's certainly on point about the dumb questions. The freaking dinosaurs. 
Humans are mammals that evolved tens of millions of years later. You don't need the strongest grasp on phylogeny in order to get that much. In movie lore, though, this is more to do with the fact that Triassic Labs means to grow dinosaurs for organ transplants in people. That's done via specific proteins, though, and why is this needed? Well, pig hearts just ain't no good, swine flu and all that. Dinosaurs had immune systems as strong and sophisticated as ours, and disease was rare, reducing any threat of cross-species infection. I just... You know, it, it has been a long time since I have spazzed out over abhorrent science in one of these movies, but... I don't even really have to explain what's wrong here, just show you it's self-evidently ridiculous. I just... How... Oof. And this is the backbone of the plot. You're wondering how they grew the dinosaurs? Well, don't, they didn't feel the need to explain that part. Making the Gojirosaurus ideal host for growing human-compatible organs. But in case you're wondering exactly what dinosaurs they're using, there it is, the Gojirosaurus. This works in two ways. Number one, Technically, it is a real dinosaur, from the Triassic period, no less. And number two, it's got that sweet, sweet Godzilla name recognition to pull in even more dough. Anyway, give them four months and they're sure they'll be ready for their first dino-to-human organ transplant. Steve here thinks that's thinking small, though. Why stop at organ transplants? You've resurrected extinct creatures. How about making people immortal? Let's crack a few open, see what makes them tick. Let's make some progress. What towards... did you just say? Crack a few open. What, you've grown these things specifically to harvest their organs. Do you not realize that involves a little invasive surgery? But Diana is the lead geneticist and therefore dino mommy. And therefore horrified at the idea of this rich asshole treating her babies like a product. No, they are to grow up and be the... the product that she always dreamed of. Marissa isn't happy with her tone, but Diana explains, hey, increasing the mortality rate of their dinosaurs that much is technically an FDA violation, so screw the morals. This ain't good no matter how you cut it. Anyway, what about the dino on the loose subplot? Well, they're still at it. It's just lucky for us that the dino on the loose eating people just so happens to be within the tracker's little allowance of movement. It's not going to interrupt the tour anytime now. So he tases her while we continue talking about the incredible intricacies of red tape in this universe. Every time one of those amusement park suffers a new tragedy, the PARC finds new things to legislate, and then we have to play catch up. Yep. So you see, this movie could have had a decent budget if the Jurassic Park franchise wasn't such a fuck up. Not like Triassic World over here, no. They never suffered an accident whatsoever. Unless, of course, you count the Gojirosaurus riding the elevator who has been terrorizing around since before the movie started. We have full lockdown! I'll say this much, the gore effects, while not incredible, are very impressive for an Asylum movie. Also, to any YouTube censors who might be watching, um, no, that is not a real dinosaur. No, that man did not really have his head removed with real blood spraying everywhere. They are actors. They are acting. None of this is real! As Steve is bitten, so beep the card and the dino runs away. Uh, okay, well, time to get him all to the safe room. It looks like every other room in here, but with only half the lights on. G32. That was G32. She broke free during euthanization. Marissa, I never got a youth notice for the 30 series. Well, obviously, Diana. They probably didn't want to hear you bitch and moan about it for 40 minutes about them doing exactly what it says on the tin. Is this everybody? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, yeah, close the door and one way or another it's gonna be everybody. Point is, they got a Gojirasaurus on the loose, so find it, trap it, and take it out. We're going to the armory and load up. A dino's not going anywhere. We get this thing back in the cage, or we take her down and the lockdown is lifted. And just like any properly thought out dinosaur breeding program, the safe room is on the far end of the building, away from the armory. Gotta keep it safe, after all. Marissa is like, sorry buds, you gotta take me with. They're all like, it's too dangerous, but she doesn't care. Also, one minor detail. I'm the only person with the code. <sighs> right, so uh, bring your boss to work day, or just run out there with a... Kill the dinosaur on the loose and your dick's in your hands. Decisions, decisions. I'm gonna sue you and everyone else's goddamn group! 
But even worse, Steve is going to sue them! Oh no, how will they financially recover from this? Sue? No, 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 I will own you! Oh no, he will own her! He's going to dominate the match! When all of this is over, every last one of you motherfuckers is getting teabagged! So it's off to the armory, with their arms, of course. Uh, they do have guns in the safe room, but only tranquilizer guns. Joining the group is Hyde, played by Corbin Miles. Also, the dinosaur, who is heading straight to the group! So Diana grabs a gun! Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, well, uh, last time I heard that one, uh, well, it was the classic TV comedy series, Sledgehammer. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. To be fair, I would feel a lot better about their chances of survival if they had a parodic version of Dirty Harry on their side. They make it to the armory, but when Smith goes for the keypad, the dino goes for Smith, tearing into his arm! <laughs> and then Hyde just um, whacks his head into the wall. Did they forget to render the dinosaur for that shot? But have no fear, for Diana is here! Not shooting the Gojirasaurus. Wouldn't want to tranquilize it? Uh, oh, well, the creature just says fuck it and leaves. At which point they discover the armory keypad is broken! So much for that plan. Back to the safe room, then. Right when the LAPD randomly arrives outside the building. Arthur Lustig, played by Jermaine Holman. He's like, hey, heard you had an emergency situation. And they're like, yeah, hurt people, dead people, and freaking dinosaurs running around. So if you could call for backup just in case of a breach, that'd be cool. He doesn't quite believe them, but... I'm out here at Jurassic Labs and... I really think there's a situation here. Well, did my part. They can figure out the rest on their own. But just sitting around all day in the safe room for the lockdown to run its course would make for a pretty boring movie. So Marissa spices things up a bit. Surprise! We have no choice but to head out there with the dino danger, because there's a little thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, the lockdown is a safeguard, but we have other safeguards, like Code 4. What is Code 4, Marissa? If for some reason the animal is not apprehended or destroyed in the first two hours after a breach, it causes a trigger of halon gas. We have to capture or kill the dinosaur within the span of a normal feature film. Otherwise, yeah, poison gas comes out and killing absolutely everyone and everything. I know horror movie characters usually make bad decisions, but wow! This makes it a lot easier to decide what to do, though. They're gonna go dinosaur hunting! Unfortunately, those trackers on the thing seem to be unable to be used to track them, so they have to find them on the cameras. And the Gojirasaurus refuses to be on camera for any more than a couple of minutes per movie. How you doing? You okay? We just hit her with 12 milligrams of cofentanyl xylazine. That's more than enough. Well, hold up. When the fuck did that happen? You, you tranquilized the dinosaur. You had an encounter with it that's not part of the movie? So that's why they can't find her. She must be sleeping in a cardboard box or something. Or in that break room. So the plan is to tranquilize her again and run. But when Tom and Diana go in, she is nowhere to be found. Hey, Smith, I don't know about your dinosaur problem, but it might help if you would uh, like the video. It's right there, right next to that subscribe button. You know, it's also there. So. Good luck dino hunting. Found her. Surprise, she is stalking them, fully aware and awake. Think of it like the kitchen scene in Jurassic Park, but with worse lighting, armed humans, and leading absolutely nowhere. You do remember you're, you're, you're trying to catch that thing, right? You know? Otherwise, yeah, everybody's dead, you know, kind of important. For the next leg of the quest, they call in Charles. Heading to the containment room, they deduce the dino must have departed by destroying the wall. Dang it. I'll better head back to that safe room and mull over the nothing they've learned. Well, that's no fun, so let's start yelling at each other. You knew this was a trap. You knew we were gonna die. Why would I want that? I'm having a hard time figuring out why I don't want any of these assholes to live. I was following procedures. Your procedures suck. No arguments here. As they shout back and forth, surprise, more alarms go off. What's going on? Code 4 has been triggered. Oh, thank God. Bring in the gas, finish these pricks, and roll credits. 
Or we can just quickly change what it means as no gas comes and nobody's dying. But the dinosaur arrives to change that. She's not getting in. Well, could something happen in this movie that actually matters? They even point out that the tranquilizers haven't been working. Now, well, it's that or nothing, and as tempting as nothing is, they might as well do it just to fill the running time. Stagger doses, get her used to it before they hit her again. Maybe that'll work better. Ah! Everyone back off! Oh, what's this? Steve is back and he is pissed! Screaming incoherently at the group, demanding that they all leave! Guess this safe room ain't all that safe anymore. So they leave, leaving behind Marissa's keycard. So now they're wandering around the halls, where the dino roams, and attacks, causing the group to split up! Where'd they go? Well, fuck if I know, the movie only showed two people actually escaping the dinosaur, everyone else is just... wherever they are. Smith and Tom in the stairwell, Bridget and Marissa over here, and Diana teleporting over to Marissa's office with her handy-dandy, ridiculously long-flamed lighter. Great for lighting a scene, scary for having so close to her hair. Oh well, plenty of classified documents here to read in the meantime. Smith, though, ain't doing so hot. First the bite, now the cut. He's got a fever. Needs some juice. Oh, but looky here! Charles and Ever are also still alive. At least for now. I'll just walk away from the dino and start musing about her strange dino brain. She's able to recognize the difference between letters and numbers. That's how she's been able to locate us. She fucking what? I... 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 First, there's a hell of a stretch. Uh, second, where the hell were the clues all movie that that might have been the case? Uh, and number three, how in the hell is telling a two from a Z making her any better at tracking stupid people? How would she know that, Charles? What have we been doing to these animals? Did you leave the TV on in the containment room? Was it playing Coco Melon? But there were probably lots of people in scenes we weren't shown hiding in rooms, and those rooms probably had numbers on the doors, so the dinosaurs maybe learned that way? Kinda? Something? I, I don't know. Were they hiding in safe room 25? Back with Bridget and Marissa, though. Marissa is looking for a possible cure for Steve's bite insanity. We've been developing these in the dinos. Now I'll get to see if they work on humans. So we've got a Jurassic Park, Deep Blue Sea, zombie apocalypse story going on here? Well, why not throw in an alien invasion to boot? Speaking of which, Smith is slowly succumbing to the bite. Right when Diana walks up like, hey, regroup time! He looks bad, let's get him somewhere slightly better to help out. But he begins to ramble incoherently. A roar leads them into hiding, and before long... No! I'll kill you! No, I'll kill you! Shut up! He suddenly realizes he's in an asylum movie and refuses to have his portfolio tarnished any longer! All this screaming summons the dino who eats his ass! Only one thing to do now. Grab a sample of dino virus blood on a on a shard of glass. Might want to try something less likely to cut yourself with. Heading back to her lab, under the microscope it goes, confirming, yes, Marissa is an evil bitch! But she's an evil bitch with the dino zombie virus antidote, so gotta get Bridget to lure money bags out if they intend to cure him. And shoot herself up with it, just in case. In the meantime, the doctors are out scrubbing all the numbers they can off the signs. It's just up ahead. <laughs> Only for Eva to be attacked by the Gojiosaurus! Thank God, Act 3 is underway and we can get back to the body counterizing. She is torn apart and Charles can't take it, going driller killer on the dino, boring its brains out and taking out the threat once and for all. Which is our cue for another dinosaur to conveniently break out and just start rampaging all of a sudden. So much for that numbers subplot bullshit. Why are you in my office? Marissa, baby. Characters just teleport around wherever the fuck they want in this movie. Yep, Diana's back at it. Back to Marissa's office and back to reading all those classified documents from ten scenes ago. How dare she know that the organ transplant plan was failing and she did evil shit that caused the bad! But never mind that for now. The walkie's going off must be something in the testing room. 
Oh, yeah, dead bodies. Oh, well, let's check out the safe room. Steve can be... Oh. No pulse. He's dead. Marissa, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Hmm, so what you're saying is uh, you're gonna need another investor. First, they gotta find that dinosaur, though. Looky here, she's smacking the keypad to release her sisters. If she does, then we can enact Code 5. What's Code 5? Who cares? It's probably a thermonuclear explosion. Unless it's inconvenient to the plot, then it just doesn't happen. Oh, but those tracking chips that don't track uh, are also rigged to explode. Don't worry, though. They don't have to do that. They can just trap them in the enclosure. But with her handy dandy key card, so Diana and Marissa head out while Bridget stays in the safe room. Steve, good to see you. How you been? So, so we cool with signing off on that investment yet? But he attacks, so Bridget kills him again. In the meantime, Diana and Marissa have made it to the containment area, but a goji attacks, and Marissa teleports outside to lock the door, which she could have done before they entered, uh, revealing her intentions to kill Diana to keep her secret safe. But when the dinosaur unlocks the cages, hey, that just so happens to unlock the door as well. So they trade places, and Diana also magically got Marissa's key and leaves her to die. So we're down to Diana, Bridget, and Tom. He's back. Seems the dinos are attacking each other. But why? They tore out each other's microchips. Oh, would you look at that? Phase 5 was also completely fucking useless. On to Phase 6. Release the ninjas! Manual override has expired. Hill on commencement in T-minus 30 minutes. There was an override? And a 30-minute buffer past the initial two-hour th- You know what? Fuck it. Movie's almost over. As such, Diana begins to turn into a dino zombie, so Bridget stabs her with a cure. And that's that. She's fine now. Still needs some crisis situation, so Bridget grabs the keycard randomly. Oh, 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 oh. Well, damn, really could've used that master key. Guess we just gotta beat the dinosaurs in hand-to-hand -hand combat now. As Bridget is killed as well as Thomas. Oh well, means Diana can grab that key and manually turn on the halon gas. Don't worry, there also just so happens to be a handy oxygen tank that has all of uh, 40 seconds of air in it. But look at that, that's all she needed! The dinosaurs are dead, the lockdown is lifted, and the LAPD can swoop in to save the day! I think this is yours. Do you really need sequel bait for this shit? What's going through Officer Dumbfuck's mind there? He's stepping around dead people and parts of dead people and big damn dinosaur bodies over and oh, found some dinosaur eggs. Well, I see no reason why this needs to go into an evidence locker. Anyway, that was Triassic World. Man, that is the asylum that we all know and know. Oh boy, was this not a good movie. But it is interesting to see how far the Asylum has come in making not good movies. The acting is pretty blah, but not the worst they've put out. And the overall visual style kinda works. The absolute high point for the movie has to be the gore effects. It was actually surprising that for as low of a budget of a movie as it is, the effects were actually not that bad, with liberal use of stage blood throughout. And for the Asylum, they were absolutely phenomenal. Which brings us to the downsides, and man oh man does this have a lot of those. The plot is the biggest offender. It simply makes no damn sense. There is a setup and a little logic at the start, but mostly the movie doesn't care. Even the how and why of the dinosaur breaking out of confinement is treated as a half-assed explanation over an hour into the movie. A nonsensical plot is one thing, though, but the flow is also just whatever. Characters appear where they are needed, go where they are supposed to be, and it almost looks like certain scenes were filmed specifically to explain how people wound up in the same room together, and then major events are simply talked about in passing. And finally, the big problem. The CGI. It's standard asylum, so poorly animated, not high quality, and unfortunately for us, very well lit and obvious. The difference between the CGI model and the puppet was so drastic it was surprising. I don't need to tell you that they used a puppet for the close shots of the actors, because said puppet actually looks not bad, especially as it's kept to lower lit scenes and doesn't do too much. 
Also, there's not really much else to say here, because there isn't anything else to talk about. The plot and pacing is a jumbled mess, so the enjoyment of the feature comes down entirely to the crappy CGI and the honestly impressive practical effects. If you like cheap dino flicks with a decent body count, this might be worth a watch. Or half, with fast forward on retainer. But otherwise, there's not all that much to write home about. Coming in at two, Inhuman Human Enhanced Dinosaur Zombie Virus Emergency Phases. Out of five. Now that's what happens when the thing that matters most to your movie is the title. And second is the release date. And I feel like Hollywood with the sequel machine could probably learn that lesson too. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, don't let a dinosaur slap your flashlight out of your hand. That is your flashlight and you deserve it. I will own you! Well, thank God that's over, but hey, if you liked it, there is that like button still down there. If you clicked it yet, right next to that subscribe button, just waiting to be clicked. But also, if cheesy dinosaur flicks are your thing, I have done a review of lots of them, such as Poseidon Rex. That was ridiculous and a lot of fun. You can check that out right there. Or just click on whatever the YouTube algorithm has selected for you at random. Unlike the choices in Triassic World, these might actually matter.